What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had another volatile day in the stock market and we continue to see weakness as we're going deeper into the stock market correction. Is there more downside coming? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today we see SPY going down yet again, declining another 0.09%. Now intraday, we did start pushing up into that resistance level right around 437.5 and we did close some of that gap. But remember what I told you just last night, when you get a gap down like this, it's an impulsive move to the downside and this is not something you wanna take lightly. We almost saw no buyers of the dip today and we didn't close green after yesterday's bloodbath, which is absolutely not going to be a bullish indication. We have three days below the 50 EMA, all of the moving averages are negatively sloping, and we continue to build up more bearish momentum the longer we continue to close below the 50 EMA. So there's no way you can look at this chart and be bullish, so you need to continue to believe me when I tell you we could be in a full-blown stock market correction and we could still have significant more downside. I know a lot of you just started trading recently and you think stocks only go up, but I'm here to tell you that's not the case and we still could go much lower. We have support levels and gaps to fill that come all the way down to 411 and we still have a gap on SPY that goes all the way down to $400, with a strong support level way down here at 404. Just to put that in perspective for you, from today's close down to 404 is another 6.8% drop. So believe me when I tell you that stock market corrections are real and you're in one of the most bearish seasonality months of the year going into September and October and the price action and the trend are actually telling us we are more than likely going into a deeper stock market correction. So some things to note is looking at the Bollinger Bands, you can see they're starting to expand and the only thing saving us from going on an elevator down is the fact that those Bollinger Bands were so contracted and we continue to find support closing outside those lower Bollinger Bands. As soon as we see those Bollinger Bands expanding and we get a nice bounce, we're more than likely going to see bears shorting and selling at resistance for that next leg lower. So I'm bearish for the time being until we can break this downtrend and we need SPY to get all the way back above at least 441 to 446 to even consider the possibility that this downtrend is ending. Ideally, we'd like to see SPY over 449. So to the upside, continue to watch resistance at 437.5 and the gap close right around 441, which is also right where our 50 EMA is. If we break above that, we're gonna have strong resistance right around 446. Take this price action and this trend seriously. And if I switch this over to a one hour chart, there's absolutely no way you can look at this chart and see anything other than a downtrend. We see lower lows and lower highs and it's bearish and it's a downtrend until it's not. So wait for an objective breakout above a key resistance before you see this downtrend ending. Now to the downside, we still wanna watch that support level right around 432 because below that, we're more than likely going to have a quick trip to 425 and below 425, we have a quick trip to 419 and the gap close at 411. So there is a ton of downside support that is many dollars apart from each other. So if you lose one support level, you could easily see a quick trip to the next one so you need to be very disciplined and very patient and understand your entries and exits on all of your trades. If you treat this market like the same market you had most of this year and most of last year, you're going to lose a lot of money because a downtrend and a bear market are very brutal and you could get very rapid elevators down. You could see on a day like today, if the bulls were out there, they would have bought the dip and we would have saw a huge rally. And today we close in the red yet again. So take the price action seriously because it's telling you everything you need to know. And like I always say, let the price action do all the talking and check your bias at the door. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up only 0.12% today and we did get the second day in a row closing below the 50 EMA as we continue to see some bearish trending with all of our moving averages rolling over and getting a negative slope. Remember, we lost the bull trend a few days ago and now we're two days below the 50 EMA. So there's no way you can look at this chart and see anything other than a downtrend and we do have price action closing below our lower Bollinger Band for the second day in a row. So we still do have a gap to fill right around 372.5, but again, we have strong resistance that we need to break above at the 50 EMA at 368. We need to see a break back above about 378.5 to consider this downtrend is ending, and that is a lot of upside price action that we need to see before we can get bullish. So for the time being, this is still a stock market correction until it's not, and we could have significant more downside. Watch support at 362.5 and 360, and below that, we're very likely coming down to 354. Below 354, look out below because the floor falls out and we could go much, much lower. So like I keep telling you, take this market seriously and don't just assume that we have to bounce because that's what you're used to. A lot of buy the dip has been programmed into you for the last couple of years, and eventually that stops working 
And when you see the trend rolling over and you no longer have a bull trend, you don't just want to blindly buy the dip. The price action and the trend are saying be cautious and look for more downside. So that's the stance we're going to take until we see something changing in the trend. In the Dow Jones, we were down 0.09% today. And again, we see a very bearish looking chart with the Dow Jones basically just flushing out to the downside, closing below that support level right around 339 yet again. We have multiple closes below our 50 EMA, and we're very close to having the full bear trend in the Dow Jones. The gap fill is up here at 345, but again, it's still going to be strong resistance that the bears want to keep that gap open, and they will short and sell into that resistance. So look for resistance around 340 to 342, and the gap close at 345, and we need to break all the way back above about 350 to start reversing this downtrend. Downside support levels are 336, and below that, look for the gap fill at 332. On the Russell 2000, we were up 0.15% today, but we still see the Russell 2000 holding below that critical resistance right around 219. If we break below 215, look out for support at 212, and below 212, we could be going much, much lower. We have a gap to fill above right around 220.7, but we need to break back above the resistance at 219 to close that gap. The Russell 2000 needs to close back above about 224 to reverse the bearish trending, and if we get that 20 civil moving average crossing below the 50 EMA around 222, we could have a full blown bear market. So watch these critical support levels and critical resistance levels. And right now the market could go either direction, but it's definitely leaning towards the downward direction with all of the bearish price action and the bearish trending that we see developing across the board. Remember, when you see something across the board that aligns, that is more likely going to be the case. We see all of the indices rolling over and we see weakness in all of the indices, which tells us we're very likely going to get that broad stock market correction which means we're only in the beginning of this correction and there's still plenty more downside to come. In the RK ETF, we were up 0.86% today, but we still see price action closing below all the moving averages. And we're very close to having the full bear trend if that 20 simple moving average does cross below the 50 EMA at 120. RK needs a break back above 121 to reverse the bear trend. Otherwise, watch critical support at 115.5, 113.8, and 112.7. Below that, we could be coming all the way back down to 109 and 106. We don't have a bull trend, so don't just blindly buy the dip. And if we start blasting through critical support, look for the full blown bear market. On the VIX, we were down 5.33% today, so we do see the VIX cooling off a little bit, but the VIX was way above the upper Bollinger Band, and we still do have the full bull trend. So the VIX is in a bull trend, and the VIX did break out and close above 23 for two days in a row. And as I've been warning you for many weeks, if we see the VIX closing above 23, look for a full blown stock market correction. So as you can probably tell, we're currently in that condition. So look for a full blown stock market correction. We still have a gap to fill just below right around 21.5, but there's no guarantee that gap has to get filled in any amount of time frame. So watch that gap, but don't just assume we have to fill it. Look for the bull trend in the VIX, because as long as we have a bull trend, you want to see if the VIX is going to bounce off any of these support levels at 21.5, 21 and 20. If the VIX can break back below 18.2, we'll be looking a lot more bullish and we could start to break the downtrend. Otherwise, look for more volatility as the VIX continues to climb as we continue to go through the stock market correction. On Bitcoin, we're currently down around 3% and we see Bitcoin rolling over as well, which could be telling us to look for more downside in the stock market. Remember that Bitcoin is a great indication of risk on and right now, Bitcoin looks like it's rolling over and going through a correction, which is a sign of risk off behavior and we could be seeing more downside. However, as long as Bitcoin is above 37,000, we could see a bounce and we could attempt to break the downtrend. But as long as we're below critical support at 43,000, you want to be a lot more defensive. We're losing the bull trend and price actions below the 50 EMA for the second day in a row. So you're definitely starting to see a universal trend here through all of the markets that we are rolling over and we are going through a correction. If Bitcoin loses 37,000, look for strong support at 30,000 and we need to break back above 45,000 and 47,000 to start reversing the downtrend and possibly go back into a bull market. So those are your lines in the sand at 37,000 and 47,000, and you need to see a decisive break below or above either of those levels to know which direction Bitcoin is going to go. On Amazon stock, we were down 0.36% today, and we see Amazon closing below all the moving averages for the second day in a row and still holding up above this support level at 3311. If we break below 3311, we could be coming all the way back down to 3185 or 3136. To the upside, we have strong resistance at 3,400 and the gap close right there at 3,452. If we can break back above 3,500, we'll be looking more bullish and we could close that gap above at 3,580 with resistance on the way there at 3,552. On Tesla stock, we were up 1.26% today and we still see Tesla holding above that key support level at 732 and we still do have the full bull trend with the gap to fill right above at 749.5. 
So Tesla is very likely going to fill that gap. But the question is, can we break out above the resistance trend line at 755 and break out above 765 to get to our next price target at 800? If we lose key support at 732, watch for strong support at 714.5. And below that, it'll look like we're rolling over and we could be coming down to 692, 658, or 626. Below 692, Tesla will look like it's going through a full-blown correction. So that's by far the strongest support level you want to watch. As long as we have the full bull trend and price action above the 20 simple moving average, you can still remain bullish on Tesla at this time. On Apple stock, we were up 0.34% today, but again, we see Apple closing below the 50 EMA for the third day in a row. And remember that Apple did hit our price target at 157, so we could be going through that full blown stock market correction. If Apple closes below 142, look for the gap fill at 137. Otherwise, look for a break above about 145 to close the gap around 146. We need to see Apple breaking back above 148 and then closing above 150 to start reversing the downtrend, and then we could possibly make another attempt at all-time highs. But with all the bearish price action and the bearish trending and momentum building up, don't expect to see Apple going back into a bull market anytime soon. On the financial sector, we were down about 0.14% today, and we still see bearish momentum picking up with the price action and the trend all starting to look bearish, and we did confirm a possible double top, so we could be going much lower. Watch for that gap fill above, but other than that, there's no reason to get overly bullish on the financials. The industrial sector was down about a half a percent today, and we still have that gap to fill above as we continue to close near the lower Bollinger Band. We're about to be in a full-blown bear trend once that 20 simple moving average crosses below the 50 EMA, and the price action is bearish below all the moving averages. The healthcare sector was up 0.15% today, closing below all the moving averages yet again, and we're starting to develop some bearish momentum. The energy sector was up about 0.23% today, and we still see the price action below all the moving averages as we're now on a full-blown bear trend, so we could be seeing the energy sector going into a bear market. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can definitely see a lot of the sectors are rolling over, and we already know that the indices rolled over and lost their bull trends with bearish price action closing below all of our moving averages. So this is not the time to be messing around and blindly buying a dip just assuming we're going to rally to new all-time highs. Take my word for it that you're in a full-blown stock market correction and you're not out of the correction until you see a decisive bullish breakout. We haven't seen that yet, so remain cautious and remain defensive as we more than likely continue this downtrend until we find a strong support level and we can start bouncing and rallying and breaking the downtrend. Take this seriously and you're much better off doing nothing if you don't know how to navigate this volatility. Also remember that I do have my own trade alert service that only trades T triple Qs and it does very well in volatile markets and I'm currently running a 50% off promotion code for your first month so now could be the best time to try out bank trade alerts. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this market and stay on the right side of the trade. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always, I will see you in the next episode.